Now, the conversation of, around the investment opportunities in Africa is on, an ongoing one with businesses trying to identify new innovative solutions to challenges like unemployment and energy security. Someone who has been part of these talks is Nursa Naidu, and he is the CEO at Sunlam Investments. Thank you so much for joining us, Nursa. And I understand that you did have a webinar where these um, big opportunities in Africa's investment landscape uh, were um, were debated and were discussed. Just walk me through the main, the key issues that came out of that webinar. Welcome to your listeners as well. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Um, I think... You know, the first the first thing we really discussed there were were the challenges that we are facing from a sustainability perspective more generally. Uh, so not just you know here in South Africa, but on the African continent more generally. Um, and sustainability there, you know, we we obviously talk about the main uh, focus areas from an uh, environmental sustainability perspective, particularly the challenges presented to us by climate change. Um, but then also from a social perspective, you know, the the challenges that we're facing from uh, unemployment. Uh, perspective, creating job security, you know, which leads to a reduction in poverty, uh, food security, um, gender equality, and all of those things. So I, I think the the overarching focus was really um, approaching it from a sustainability perspective, understanding the sustainability challenges we're facing, and uh, and then moving into um, the specific things that you know we need to start thinking about in terms of addressing those challenges. Uh, so when you when you talk about you, you, you know the the climate challenges, it obviously relates a lot to um, how we move our energy footprint more into a green energy or clean energy space. Um, and from a social challenge perspective, I think you know uh, probably one of the key points there um, was the strong interrelatedness between you know the the energy transition and um, mm. the job creation or job security perspective or picture going forward. Yeah, and we do know that sustainability is a very big issue at the moment. Just yesterday, we had uh, uh, someone from uh, AM AMEA Power basically uh, saying that 32 countries in Africa uh, have an energy deficit. But just sticking to energy, in South Africa, we do know that to, uh, you, it's imperative for us to move away from coal. But are there really enough uh, projects to make sure that we reach that carbon neu uh, neutrality in the adequate timelines? Yeah, so so I think the the first thing to understand there from a from a let's talk about it from an Africa perspective firstly is that you know five of the biggest um, economies on the African continent that would be Nigeria, Algeria, Morocco, uh, South Africa, and Egypt are all still very fossil fuel um, heavy economies. You know, so we, we're still dependent a lot on fossil fuel energy um, to drive uh, these economies, the five biggest economies on the continent. Um, and we can't simply switch that off. So it's, it's you know you you can't overnight transition from a from a fossil fuel driven economy to a green economy. Uh, so there's a there's a transition in place there, and that's where we start talking about things like a, a just transition um, to make sure you you know that we we think about the social aspects in terms of job protection, um, humanity impacts when we transition to that green environment. Um, the project pipeline, you, you know, I think it's something that we, we will have to look at. There's a couple of very good uh, projects uh, that have been funded and on the go, uh, particularly in South Africa. You would have seen recently, um, you know, news about the um, Redstone Solar Project, which was an initiative that Salam also contributed to, to funding and a, a really fantastic uh, project from a clean energy perspective in South Africa. Uh, but I think a lot more work will have to go in in the coming years into developing that pipeline of projects that uh, um, that will help us in that transition to a more um, green energy supported uh, economy. Mm. And of course, uh, talking about the impact investment uh, with the landscape of COVID-19, is it now easier or harder to allocate money to impact investments? No, so I think, you know, what COVID, what COVID really did was... I. I spotlighted a lot of the the challenges that you know we are we are facing from a sustainability perspective i think we've been uh, growing our awareness of the climate challenge for a long time now you know the last few years and you can think about a lot of things that have happened around the world that have, have put a spotlight on the on the on the environmental challenges and and particularly those that have come about as a result of climate change but what covid really did i think and particularly here well really around the world but here in south africa um, amplified that spotlight on some of the social challenges that we are facing um, and it created you know really uh, opportunities or awareness 
to help in the deployment of capital to support some of those social initiatives. You know, from a Sunlam perspective, um, last year we we communicated the uh, the launch of the Investors Legacy range of funds, where Sunlam put two and a two point two five billion rand of its own capital um, behind investing. You know, either in small businesses that needed debt funding to help them get through COVID to to keep people employed and keep those businesses um, sustainable for the longer term, or equity financing through private equity to um, to achieve a similar objective of creating and uh, you know preserving jobs. So I think the that whole focus on jobs and the importance um, of jobs and impact investing as a way to to mm. uh, to contribute to job preservation and job creation uh, was really amplified and highlighted by the COVID challenge. And I think there's ample opportunity to uh, to deploy capital from an investment uh, or from an impact investment perspective. Mm, and one of the key ways also uh, to increase uh, that job creation is through infrastructure investment. And of course, we know that that is a big drive as part of uh, South Africa's economic reconstruction and recovery plan. But there's been a big drive in terms of Regulation 28 of um, pension funds um, being used to support that infrastructure uh, investment and development. Just looking at that Regulation 28, are you now in a space where you are confident to commit your clients' uh, pension funds to that infrastructure investment? Yeah, so I think what, what the proposed amendments are going to do is offer, offer investors uh, more opportunity to, you know, to use retirement fund money to contribute to infrastructure development. But, you know, I think the, the key point here is that infrastructure is a fundamental building block for economic growth, whether you think about it from the perspective of um, energy being a key input into any economy, you know, and you, you referenced earlier, um, the energy deficit in, in Africa is one of the key challenges to to reaping the, the economic growth dividend that we can get out of uh, out of Africa as a continent. So, so the, the investment in infrastructure is going to be critically important, you know, as a, as a fundamental cornerstone for economic growth. Uh, from an asset management perspective and thinking about how we deploy capital, I think what the, what the proposed amendments will do will give, give more opportunity to deploy um, funds into infrastructure investments, but you will have to exercise you know, due care in making sure um, that you're investing in the right projects, that you know, all the necessary uh, checks and balances are in place to make sure uh, you're getting the appropriate returns out of those investments while still having the desired impact of um, you know, contributing to infrastructure development and having a knock-on effect um, from an impact perspective on jobs and the economy and the, and the like from there. Mm -hmm.